Hello. Okay, so I'm going to give it just a few seconds to see if anybody's going to start trickling in. I hope everybody is doing well. I know some people may be bored at home. Everyone is social distancing. Okay, so I'm going to get started and hopefully people will join in as I'm going along. I hope everybody is doing very well. To introduce myself, my name is Lisa and I work at the Heckscher Museum of Art located in Huntington. So because we're all stuck at home right now, I figured that I would provide a nice little opportunity for everybody to get creative and artsy at home. So to do that, we're actually starting a series called Heckscher at Home. So this will be one of hopefully many future ones. So I hope you guys enjoy this and tune in and keep up with us to hear about more future ones. So a part of doing Heckscher at Home is I figured that I would teach you guys a little bit about one of my favorite works of art, a part of the museum's permanent collection. So once again, my name is Lisa. So if you have any questions, just put down a comment and I will see it and hopefully answer all of your questions. So the one that we're going to be focusing on today is called Space Loom 23 by Ibram LaSalle. So what I'm going to do is first take a couple of minutes to teach you guys about it and maybe point out a few different things that you might have never noticed before. And after that will be the best possible part, which is to do our project at home. Now, it's going to be super, 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 super simple, and I will explain it to you guys in a little bit. So let me see. People are joining in now. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Okay, so without further ado, let me show you guys. And if you're at home, you have a table surface near you, please go ahead and give me a little bit of a drum roll. Okay, three, two, one. All right, so I'm going to keep this here for everyone to be able to see. And if anyone has any issues, please just let me know. So, of course, I'm showing you guys a picture on my iPad, but if you guys look very carefully, especially on the bottom of the picture, you'll see that we have a lot of shadows. So the reason why we have shadows is because this is actually a sculpture in the museum's collection. So when I say sculpture, that's pretty different than anything else you would see hanging up on the walls. And the key here is the word hanging. So while a sculpture is three-dimensional and things that you see hanging on the wall like drawings or photographs or things along those lines are considered two-dimensional. So 2D is something hanging flat on a wall, whereas something 3D, like a sculpture, you're able to walk around, look through it, look above it, look underneath it, but of course being very careful not to touch it. So luckily that will not be a problem for us here, but I'm actually going to zoom in so we can take a closer look. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in even further. So let's look at it from the top, and I'm going to pan starting from the bottom and then move towards the top part here. So while we're looking, guys, try to see if you can notice all different things about this. And I'll share with you guys some of my own observations here. So while we're looking at this, would you guys say that the bottom looks the same as the top? If you ask me, it definitely does not. So the bottom looks a lot more simple and you can see a lot more of the background, that gray color through it. Whereas when you're looking at the top, it becomes a lot harder to see. So the bottom part is a lot simpler, whereas the top gets increasingly more and more complicated. So when you guys are looking at this, you could see there's tons of lines. Does it look like they're all going in the same direction? Yeah, I didn't think so either. So some are going top to bottom, and we call that vertical lines. And then you see some going uh, side to side, which we call horizontal. And then they're all being interconnected. So while you guys are looking at this, what color would you say stands out the most to you? For me, I think, especially against that gray or like white background, that metallic gold really stands out above all else. So it might make you wonder, well, what could this possibly be made out of? So the artist actually used bronze to create this entire thing. I know, it's kind of crazy. I can't believe it. So when you look at the bottom, it's a lot thicker. And that's because when it's thicker on the bottom, it's able to give more support and keep the whole thing stable so that the things that are more intertwined and complicated at the top are able to not fall apart and have a good base to stick on. Uh, so when we're looking at that gold, 
does it look smooth or rough or what do you think the texture might be if you were able to touch it so when i'm talking about the texture of something it's as if you were imagining how something would feel on the surface if you were putting your fingers on it now of course we can't do that in a museum but we could definitely use our imaginations so with this one it definitely would feel something like bumpy not smooth by any means uh, and that's going to be a little hint as to what kind of material we'll be using to do our project in a minute uh, so the last thing that I want to point out to you guys is when you're looking at this, what does it remind you of? Anything? Have you seen anything like this in the real world? Okay, so I see somebody here has suggested that it looks like a maze. And I think that's a wonderful way to describe this. So when we're saying that it looks like a maze or when I'm working at the museum, I've had people suggest that it looks like a roller coaster or it looks like a pipe system underground. It can look like something different to everybody. And the reason why is because we have a word to describe a sculpture like this. And that word is abstract. So when I say that something like this is abstract, it means that when you're looking at it, you see lines, shapes, colors, but when you put all of that together, it doesn't really look like anything in the real world. So we call that abstract. So if you've never heard that before, I'll give you a second. How about you repeat it after me? Abstract. Okay. So when you're looking at something that we call abstract, the really fun part about it is everybody could say something different on what they think it looks like and they're not wrong and the reason why is because the artist has made it really free to everyone have their own opinion and guess what it could possibly be so without further ado now that we've talked a little bit about the sculpture let's get to the best part which is to make our projects so i'm going to set this aside for a second but i will bring it up back up for reference now I mentioned before that you actually only need one material to do this. Yes, nothing else, just this one lone material. And to make it easier, I bet almost everybody has this household item at home. So it's, da -da 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 -da, I have it with me, tin foil. So I'm sure everybody has some of this laying around. I happen to have the heavy duty kind with me. And I actually already did this project so I could show you guys the final result. You might have also seen it when we posted about this under our social medias. So really quick. So we're, I'm actually going to be showing you guys two different versions of this project. One is going to be abstract like we saw in the original sculpture. But we're taking inspiration, right? So we're not trying to copy what the original artist did. We're trying to get inspired and do something after we've seen what he's created. So while we have one that's going to be abstract and be a little bit more similar to what Ibram Lasau did, we're also going to be doing one that's a bit more realistic. So it looks like something you already know in the real world. So without further ado, let me show you guys what I've created. So I actually have this on a board so it would be easier to show you. Okay. Ta da! Let me hide myself a little bit. Ta da! Okay, so I'm going to, if you guys see, hopefully the glare isn't too bad. All right, so I'm going to switch the angle. And if you guys notice, it actually looks different every which way that I'm turning it for you. Okay, so it definitely, I'm going to set this down now, but I'll bring it back, back, bring it back for reference at some point. So it was not intentional, but I actually, I think it looks a lot like a jungle gym. Uh, and you guys might think differently. Do you guys think it looks like a jungle gym at all? Let me see. Oh, I hear, see here people gave a lot more suggestions like ant tunnels. <gasps> looks like a city. Very good. You guys had some awesome observations. Uh, so to me, when I look like it, it really reminds me of a crazy jungle gym with like a lot of different contraptions on it. So when I started doing this, I actually did not have a plan when I was going in because the whole point is that we want to explore and experiment and try all different ways before we get to our final product. I'd even go as far to say that it's probably more fun just doing than even caring about what it might look like at the end because if you're doing it and putting effort in, it's going to look good no matter what. So I'm going to show you guys that one. And then the second one, ta-da. All right, I'm going to put it nice and close. 
in front of my shirt. Maybe it'll be easier to see. So I actually decided to make a person and he's upside down. He could also be right side up, but when I have him this way, he actually stands up on my table, which is very fun. I have him on my desk right now. He keeps me company while I'm being, while I'm socially distancing myself. So I'm going to show you guys today how to make both of these creations. And remember, just because I'm making my abstract playground or I'm making my person doesn't mean that's exactly what you have to do. So you can make a house, you can make your favorite animal, uh, think about all of your hobbies or things that you enjoy. Maybe if you like to skateboard or if you wanted to make a surfboard or if you play a sport, you can make a baseball bat and a ball. It is all up to you to decide what you want to be doing. So without further ado, let me get into the actual project. Now you might be thinking, Lisa, how in the world did you get a piece of tin foil to turn into those things? Well, very shortly, you guys will be able to do the same thing. So what I would suggest is you guys to watch this whole video through and then at the end, hopefully you feel inspired and you can rewatch this and follow along and do it and be able to pause at your own pace. Uh, so, like I mentioned, all we need is this tin foil. I actually pre-cut all my pieces for time purposes. And before I get started, let me see if anybody has any questions. Oh, thank you. Somebody said that they agree that it looked like a jungle gym. Somebody said my guy is cute. Thank you. Okay, very nice. So, if nobody else has any other questions, I'm going to move forward. So all I used, and, I, and I'm pretty sure this is the size that I used for both of my projects. Okay, so it's about this big, not that bad, and I didn't measure anything, I eyeballed everything, so please uh, don't get crazy about uh, oh, what size is this, or how long is it, or how wide is it, I really just used my eyes for everything. So really, like I said, you only need the tin foil, but I personally use scissors uh, to cut my tin foil, but you can also tear, you don't need to. But if you're a young kid and you do wanna use scissors, please have a parent present or somebody watching you and that you have permission to do it. So what I did once I had my big piece of tin foil is, well, first of all, I just kinda of like the sound. Let's do a little ASMR for you guys. If you guys want on your own, maybe just take a small piece to like crunch it up by your ear and see what it sounds like. So with this tin foil, the reason why I decided to choose it is does it have any similar qualities to the bronze that we saw the original uh, sculpture have? Does anybody spy any similarities? Okay, so it's really shiny, like that metallic quality of the gold that we saw before. And once we start playing around with it and crumpling it up or rolling it up, it'll start to have that bumpy surface that we saw the original sculpture have as well. So without further ado, let's go. So once I had my big piece of tinfoil, I started cutting them and tearing them. And what I want you to do is I want you to cut them so that they're all different widths. So I say this because we need some pieces that are going to be wider and then once you roll them up or scrunch them, they are going to be thicker and then when you have the thinner pieces, they'll be thinner. So like we saw in the original, and I'll bring it up one more time so we're all on the same page here. So like I originally mentioned to you guys, if you look at it, the bottom we said was a lot thicker than the top part is. Now if we want to get complicated on the top, we have to make sure the bottom is really stable and can support everything that we're creating at the top part. Okay, just reading a few comments here. Yes, it is crunchy and shiny. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm glad we all share the same observations. So once you have that big sheet of tin foil, you're going to start tearing them. Now, again, I've pre-cut them for time purposes. So when I say a wider piece, this is about the size that I was able to cut. And if I put it against myself, you guys can see a little bit more easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a second to roll this and scrunch it so you guys can see what it would look like. Okay, so if you could see, I really did it roughly. Do not have to get super specific about it. Okay. 
and you don't have to focus on making it too tight either because we're going to start rolling it and uh, turning it and twisting it. So just do that. So if you could see, and I'll just do one of the thinner ones so you guys can see the difference in how wide they are. So when I say a skinnier piece, it's about this much, and I'll put it in comparison to my wide piece. Okay, so it's like maybe like a third of the size. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and roll up this one too so you guys can see the difference. Oh, I see somebody's uh, child said that it looks like the Eiffel Tower. That's very funny. Okay, you guys are enjoying the scrunching. Me too, I'm glad you guys like it as well. Okay, so remember, I want you guys to be focused on having a good time and not what's gonna look the best, all right? So we're experimenting and exploring and see what we can do that's gonna be different and unique. Okay, so this one's just about done, so I'm gonna show you guys the size difference. Okay, here you go. So you can see that this one is maybe like half the size of the original one that I created. So once you guys do this, it's up to you to now to have fun. So I think I originally, when I made them, I made about four really thick ones and I made about five or six thin ones. And then I just went to town and I put on some music and I had a good time uh, trying to figure out what I was going to be doing. So with that, uh, if I could give you guys some tips and tricks. Mm -mm. So to make some tips and tricks, well, on the bottom, you can start to make like wider shapes rather than make like this, rather than making them really thin to begin with like this. So that's going to have a harder time having anything be built on top. So with the thinner pieces, I experimented with spiral. So when I say spiral, I'm actually going to take a piece off of my sculpture. Okay. So I started making shapes that look like this because when I was looking at the original sculpture, Space Loom, I noticed that most of them were geometric shapes, so things that looked like squares or rectangles, and I wanted to do something a bit different. So I decided to, instead of just doing circles, to do something more like a spiral. So let's say if you wanted to do a triangle, for instance. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a triangle so you guys can see. So I made my triangle and I actually left a little part on the end and that's because you don't want to close these parts because then it'll stop you from building on top of what you originally created. So you can always close those ends by wrapping it around. But for now, you can leave it open so you're free to change the places if you don't like how one part looks. So I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, so that was for the abstract one. Now to move on to this guy over here this actually took less time and it took less material than the abstract one so let me see, show you guys how i got started with this okay so i see somebody made a ball fantastic oh and somebody suggested that it looks like snakes it's a little creepy but i really like the out there idea thank you for sharing all right so for my person i'm actually going to again start with one long and thicker piece of tin foil so i'm going to go ahead and repeat the same step that i began with and i'm going to roll it and scrunch it okay so i have rolled and scrunched and again i'm making it pretty loose it does not have to be perfect all right, so once you got that, what I actually want you to do is to fold it in half. So what this is gonna do, it's going to act as your body to begin with. So once you have this step, I'm actually gonna have you twist it, but only about halfway on the body. So if you see, this is the top, and then this is the bottom, and then the two parts are still separate. So the reason why we're keeping the bottom part separate is, you guessed it, those are going to be the legs. So I'm going to scrunch those up just a little bit more so they're a little tighter. All right, and for now, we're gonna leave that part alone. So we got a body, we got two legs, but now we need a head. 
So what I did for the head is, again, very simple. And for my friend before who said that they made a ball, this is going to be right up your alley. Okay. So what you're going to do is take a square rectangle just about this size, put it next to my head for reference. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to roughly start making it into a ball, but don't make it really tight yet. This is what it looks like for right now. And then I want you to find a good area to put the tip or the loop that you originally made the opposite of where the legs are into what will soon be the head. So now that it's on top, I'm going to scrunch it up more and make it a tight ball. All right, what do you guys think? Is this a good size head? Should I add a little bit more tinfoil, make it a bigger head? Somebody said it looks like a wishbone. Very cool, thank you. All right, so I actually think the head might be a little small. So to keep it proportionate, I'm gonna add one more layer. So I had previously cut some thinner and shorter pieces so that I could layer with. So I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to wrap it around. Okay. So remember, you don't have to, nothing has to look perfect right from the beginning. So I'm going to work with it like this. And then at the end, if I feel like I need to add more, I can always add more too. So what I'm going to do now is I have two more skinny pieces that I'm going to roll and scrunch so that these will be the arms. Now remember, you're going to keep them a little bit longer than you would normally want the arms because we're going to wrap about two inches of it around the body so that it will be able to stick and come together. So I'm going to take a second to do that. So like I mentioned, now that my skinny arm is all finished, I'm going to take one part and about this much, I'm gonna wrap it around the body. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. All right, so my arms are a little wide. So all you gotta do is if you made too much, you're going to wrap them a little bit more. So I'm pretty happy with that length, but now my body looks a little messy because it's uneven and you can see all the ways that I twisted it. So one of the last steps that you would do is if you want to make it a little bit thicker and hide all those things, you would take one more thin piece and you would wrap it around to cover those up. Okay, and then you would scrunch, scrunch, scrunch to make a better body. And then it is up to you to change it and have your person do whatever you want. Maybe you want to make them accessories. You could make them a guitar. You could make them a sandwich. You could make them a pet. It is up to you to create whatever you want with your tinfoil. And it is as easy as that. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, somebody wants it to be bigger? You could definitely make it bigger. This is just the size I decided to go with. Ooh, and someone mentioned it looked like a lollipop before. Awesome. Okay, so those are the two versions of our tinfoil sculpture that I have brought to you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create this, and I hope right after this, you guys go ahead and create your own. Now, if you do do this project, I would love to see what you guys have made. So please feel free to take a picture of your beautiful artwork that you have done and tag Hector Museum on any of our social medias. We have Instagram, we have Twitter, obviously we have Facebook, and we would love to see what you guys have created. Now remember, I told you guys that this is a series at the very beginning, meaning this is not the only one. So if you really enjoyed what happened here today, uh, please let us know in the comments or down here right now, and we will be bringing more of these in the future for you. So remember to uh, like and follow all of our social medias and to see when our next one will be. Thank you so much for joining me today day guys and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Please stay safe and wash your hands and have a wonderful day. Bye!